Right, so time to do a review on this camera which I've been sent from uh, Omni CCTV. As you can see just here, this company uh, kindly provided me this camera for free for the purpose of review. Um, and so the link's down in the description there for going straight to their um, Amazon page and their Amazon store to uh, to look at these cameras and hopefully purchase one if you like what you see. Um, so this is what comes with this particular camera. This is a, I think it's a four megapixel. I haven't actually checked the specs out on this one yet, actually. Um, but this is what it comes with. So you got a little instruction manual, it shows you how to set the thing up. Um, oh, I just dropped that. Uh, Packing list that shows what comes with it, and this all appears to be there, obviously. And mounting instructions for different kinds of configurations. Um, this one here is the one which actually applies to this particular camera. Um, right, so let's get this manual here. Let's look through these first, get these out of the way. Then we can get into the guts of it. Uh, so, you've got default setup information here, so your default IP addresses and password login stuff for getting to the camera. Mounting, uh, well, dimension information, um, compliance information, um, all the actual outputs. So, these are what the camera. Can support so audio input, so it's a microphone input or something, I believe. Um, audio output, alarm input, alarm output, power supply, and obviously IP connection, uh, Ethernet connection. Um, so, various maintenance information and things like that, the regulatory stuff, mounting it, how to actually mount the thing. Now, there is a uh, mounting template here. Which is actually adhesive, so you can stick onto the surface and just marks where you drill the holes, which is quite convenient. Nice little detail to add that. And also, your instructions here on how to actually set it. And it's also they got a pivot inside, so you can see this one here right now, it's pointing straight up, but it's got a um, hinge mechanism inside so you can adjust the angles. And um, you can get a bit closer there, a bit more detail on those. Hope you can see that. This could have been a little bit bigger to actually see it a little bit easier really that would have been nicer to have bigger pictures but um, you mean I suppose you can figure out what it means from looking at it but um, and how to access it and so this tells you how to use it so this, again this uses Internet Explorer 7 or later using ActiveX um, this likely means it won't work on a Mac but that's that's um, that's not unusual very few things do actually work on the Mac because they're set up and designed to work with PCs on Internet Explorer Although Internet Explorer no longer being a thing, I'm quite surprised that's still something which is a requirement. Um, and it's got some information here about using the waterproof connections for the plug, how to set those up and connect that, and using waterproof sheathing and stuff like that. So, you know, it's all basic instructions here, nothing surprising. So, it comes with uh, roll plugs and some screws, mounting screws already. So it's got one spare because I think it's only got two mounting holes. So um, there's one spare plug and one spare screw, which is nice. So waterproof kit for the IJ45. Um, so you can actually, this is actually made in a way so you can actually put an existing cable in. You don't have to do it without a plug on. You can actually put an existing cable into that and then reseal it up afterwards. So that's a nice design. Usually you have to actually have a, a bare cable and then put a plug on after you thread it through. It Threaded it through the connector, so um, that's quite nice. Um, right, and actual cable connections on here. So as I said in the manual, um, that's the audio in. Two wires, obviously. Um, audio in left, audio in right. So it's got two pairs. Audio out. There's the. Um, Alarm. Got P and N. Not quite sure what the significance of those are. Um, and alarm input. And also the DC 2.1mm GC jack as standard, and a IJ45 female as standard. So those are things you expect. Now this has got um, security screws in there. If we get the light, let's get. Oh, let's get some better lighting. Hold on. Right. So you can see there's security screws in there. 
so I, I expect my screwdriver will get in there just fine so um, I shall open this up and have a little look because you need to do it anyway to set the thing up all right so my wife bought me some cake which she made I'll be using that shortly um, slightly distracted so um, these look like about a number 10 uh, could be 9 or 15 but I don't think so yeah 10 all right let's get into this thing get to this oh that's tight that doesn't want to turn the screwdriver is really hard to grip it slips too easily I might try a different screwdriver I'll be right back okay other screwdriver set out so this is a much better screwdriver um, for grip you can actually grab hold of this one and get quite a bit of effort onto it and it's also got this collar in here which you can tighten up to grip um, part of a set which I, it's a cell phone kind of set but fortunately the um, Torx doesn't go up high enough but uh, anyway so let's move that away so I'm going to use it that bit from that first set to the screwdriver the second set and here we go right that's better that turns at least okay what do we get there's a bonding strap on there okay that's a nice touch so if you're working on this on the ceiling um, this can just hang from it it doesn't actually drop off so that's a nice that's a nice detail this looks like a nice quality camera We've got those kinds of little details in there you know with the the ceiling on this being good you know well designed and this strap on here I mean that wasn't a requirement it's just something done to make it better to use um, that's nice you know it's not, it doubles it's probably an earthing strap as well that does feel like it's probably it may not be um, actually let's find out let's fire up the segment and uh, test for continuity let's just have a look come on right, continuity No, it's not a strap, it's just a bond for, for the um, lid. That's all, no other thing there. There was no connection, electrical connection. So it's just purely to hang the thing from the ceiling when you're working on it. So like I said, that's a really nice touch. So there's the inside. Um, it's got some elastic on there in these parts. On that capacitor at least. It's got some silica gel pads in there to help seal it. Um, keep the moisture out. Which means I probably shouldn't have this cut open for too long because otherwise it absorbs too much moisture. Um, and it's also got, yeah, it's got sil sealant in there as well on those connections inside there to help stop those coming loose. So, and around the, the uh, centre there where the cables come in, it's also got sealant. So it looks like it's, it's done very nice. It's got a little backup battery in there. It's got a micro SD card slot just there for obviously local backup. Um, it's nice. Let's just put this back together again. So I don't want to get too much moisture into it. I want it to dry out. Uh, there, like that. Is it right? Yep. So I don't want those to get too wet. So, okay. Um, right. Let's think about what I'm going to do next. Okay. Hmm, just finished cake. That was nice. Right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out of the way. So I've got the thing hanging around. And we're going to look at how this thing is manipulated. So it's got like a, a tipping section here, so it's going to tip over. Okay, it's got some adjustment screws at its side, which I'll obviously just, just um, tight enough right now to allow me to move it slightly. Um, and it does it turn as well, it does, it turns as well. So this is uh, allows you to save this um, if he's looking straight, you know, in in parallel with it, you know, it's it's fine. But if it's say on a wall, you might need to, you know, have it angled downwards, you know, kind of like so. In which case you need to tip it around that way to make it level in the screen, you know. Things like that. So it's that's nice that it's got that indexing as well, so you can just click it into place. 
Um, I actually like the design of this. This is really nice. Very nice. Um, what's behind there? Something here. It looks like it's probably a power supply. Yes, yeah, a transformer, I think, just here. Another cap there. Um, what brands are these caps? Can't see. I don't recognise brand name. Don't really see a brand name there. Um, P two by four. I don't think that's the brand name somehow. That one there says PET as well, so maybe it's PET is the brand name. Um, looks like there's an unpopulated position here for something, and the unpopulated one there, and here. So it's obviously a board which you use for like, different cameras or whatever. Universal board. There's another position here for switch. But looks like it's a nicely designed board. It's got very small parts in there. It looks like decent quality, so um, that's actually quite impressive. It's probably one of the best cameras I've seen, actually, to be honest. It's very nice. Oh, so I've just left it tipped over sideways like that, so I can put it on a surface and just look at sideways and see what happens. It's reassembly, so I'm trying to keep all the moisture out of it because it's got those silica packs in there, which is good, but you need to make sure we don't get the moisture in there in the first place for them to be effective. Okay, so and also it's got this um, protective cover on here as well, which it says to not remove until it's been installed. So it's obviously so we can scratch because that is just like a it's probably um, PMMA polymethyl methacrylate um, most likely it could be something else uh, um, polycarbonate it's the other one I'm thinking of it could be polycarbonate but um, probably PMMA I was as acrylic or plexiglass, whatever you want to call it. All right. All right. So this is the uh, dash cam. Uh, sorry, dash cam. The camera input. So what I've done is got a settings here. My Mac. This is my default settings. I tend to use my secondary Ethernet port, um, and I've got a big subnet mask here, so I can get onto anything. You know, anything on those digits. Um, so that's what I've set to, and. Um, First I went to 192.168.1.13 and there was nothing there. So I went to 0 0.13 and then it popped up with a message. Same thing but it said that IP address has been changed to 1.13 because there's two versions um, depending upon the um, firmware. And apparently it looks like it updates itself when it detects it's the other one or something. Um, anyway, so then I went back to 1.13 and here's the login box. So let's uh, see what happens. So admin and 1.2.3.4.5.6 was the... Um, live view. Uh, default password from what, what, I what I remember from the instructions anyway. So hopefully I've got this right. Uh, yeah, sure, save it, whatever. Alright, missing plugin. So as expected, my, my computer doesn't um, have the ability to look at the camera screen. Yeah, it's like, don't have it. So, um, so we'll see what else we get into and over that. that. Can we get into anything at all? all? Right. So I just can't view the video stream itself, but we can look through the settings at least. And these are its network addresses. Network address info. Here we go. So we can change its settings in here. Okay. So we got there. Local settings. Yep, yeah, okay. So there's several things in here which I don't have a clue what they are, but then I'm not an expert on these things. So overwrite recording, yeah, you want that usually. You don't usually want it to stop, you want it, you want it to overwrite our recordings on a DVR. Obviously, this is for the um, internal SD card it can have. Encoding format. I'm not familiar with that format. Interesting. I have to look into that one. Uh, Ethernet settings, obviously, which I'll click just now. It's actually quite common for people to set this as 1498 um, to avoid any slight bit overruns if there's an issues with connections. So, um, just as a general thing for most Ethernet setups. But that's what it's supposed to be, but it's, it's like a workaround. Um, 
So basic DHCP settings and do static IPO, PPOE as well. So you actually use this as a trigger for a um, like a standalone network connection or something. Uh, time server stuff, yeah, okay. Different time servers, so yeah, I want that one. And the time is out by. Oh, that works. Can't sync with computer time, that's handy. So that's done that. Let's actually save that. Server info, so this is obviously the connections to the, into the camera. Um, I'm not f too familiar with this. This is TMS, I'm not sure what that is. On screen display options. Yeah, okay. Probably won't be able to do anything this really until I get the um, thing usable. I'll probably have to do this on the PC and just uh, go through the rest of this on that once I've gone through the settings on here. I'll do it on this one because I can do the screen capture really nicely, whereas on the PC I don't have the software on there for that. Um, yeah, user information, network, here we go, more network info, which is a duplicate of the previous one. DNS servers, port settings, dynamic DNS, yeah, that's always handy, but I don't use that myself. Uh, peer to peer, um, nice QR code option there, makes it a bit easier. Email, so you can send yourself notifications if there's alerts, which is also a handy feature. Um, add that to on X. Now this is something I'm not too familiar with. I've seen it around, but I don't remember what it's actually for. Uh, audio video options. So these are the actual streams and quality settings and so on for what you want to actually get. Um, 4 megapixel at 20 frames, 25, 60 at 25. So, you know, 30, 25, 30, 25 there for those, for those resolutions. So, um, if you want a really high resolution but slower frame rate, then you can do that. Um, you know, multiple streams, obviously. So, we've got uh, D1. 720p D1 as, as a second stream, or D1 to Ceph and Ceph as third stream. Um, video compression options, H.264 is the most common. Watch your frame rates, so you can slide it down to reduce the uh, loading on the network. Uh, bit rates, this is like quality setting really, so if you, the higher you set this, the better quality you'll get out of it. Um, so I'll actually be inclined to increase it anyway. Constant bitrate, I've been trying to go variable bitrate as well. Um, image quality, is this a slider? No, it's not, is it just a... There we go, so you do variable bitrate and then it will allow you to change it. Okay. Um, or you can maybe set it variable and then set a constant bitrate for that. Maybe that's what it's doing, I'm sure. In the frame, GOP, don't know what that's for. Smoothing, yeah, it's probably just for like uh, transitions between frames. SVC, then what is smart encoding? I don't know. Basic mode off, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it does basic settings as presets or something. Uh, same options in there and in there. Uh, frames, obviously, 25 is max. But you can reduce them, and as you can see from the bit rates on these substreams, they're much lower quality streams, um, as you would expect. Otherwise, everything else is the same. So, as you can see, you can do four megapixel this camera. That's what it's capable of doing, which is pretty good. Um, I'll say this 20, 25, 60 would be adequate for what I want anyway. Um, all right, snapshot info. You can turn it on and off. Um, so I can just do periodic photos, it would looks here we go, so you can just do periodic pictures. Every sixty seconds it will take a picture or something. That's interesting, so you can do kind of interesting things with that. Quality settings. Audio uh, input gain compression. So you can turn these on and off as well. So if you're not using audio, it doesn't matter. You can leave it off. 
Um, yeah, there's anyone input. I don't know what that does. Media stream, um, multicast addresses, stuff like that. So you can set up um, port configurations, it looks like. So set different IP addresses and ports for each stream. Looks like it's an interesting option. Right, images. Looks like a replication. Oh, you got this stuff down here too, so let's have a look at these. So I can do changes to something. Scenes are usually where it switches between different cameras, but it's only a single camera, so I'm not quite sure what the story is there. Maybe it zooms in the sections of the view or something. Typical image information, exposure information. Flicker, correction. Uh, compensation, so it's a bit dark, you can counter that. Um, automatic switching for day and night, so you've got the A3 LEDs on a camera. Sensitivity settings, so how bright it needs to be before it will switch over. Um, WDR, which is. I've forgotten. Forgotten what it stands for. It's gone in my head, but it's like a brightness thing anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, smart illumination. So it's infrared settings. Means you can control the brightness of these probably. Probably if it's um, too intense, if it's really close, you can get that where it saturates out the picture. Probably allows you to control that. Um, white balance automatic and advanced defogging. I'm not quite sure what that will be for, but um, maybe it is. Some interesting feature there. Right. On screen display stuff. Um, yeah, we saw it before. Privacy mask, which is a common feature where you can actually set block out sections of the screen. Um, Smart settings. So this is that thing which I looked at just now. People counting. Interesting. What do these do? Cross line. So I guess that's the zone setting. Intrusion. <coughs> oh, you know what to do with it. Alarm output, trigger email, that sort of stuff. So these are like alarm settings. Um, Defocus. Okay, so if something gets, say the camera gets covered up, it'll detect that. Scene change, so if the camera gets moved, it'll detect that. Um, face detection. So this is a new feature. I haven't seen this in a camera before, but obviously it's something which is around. Um, and my existing cameras have this at least. So you detect a certain spot on the camera. Obviously, because I've got, haven't got the plug in, I can't do that. Um, so you can actually upload the picture as well. Or trigger an alarm if it detects a face, which is quite uh, intelligent, certainly. So I just intelligent settings. People counting. Indoor and outdoor settings. So. Okay, so you can detect people travelling through, it looks like. Um, chain calculation. Don't know what that does. And did I miss any? No, it's no tabs up there. Um, single photo. Advanced settings for something. I don't know what. Uh, right, events. Come alarm settings. <coughs> So motion detection, uh, tampering, so it detects movement and things like that with the camera or detecting sound, 
You see on input and you on output. So that's the standard kinds of things. Storage for well, I don't have a memory card in there right now, but it can take one. Um, I'm not sure sure the memory card limit is on this. I'll have to look at the website and look at the specs on there um, and see. I doubt it'll be limited to 32 gigabytes these days. It's probably more than that now. Um, so video snapshots and smart snapshots. So you can adjust capacities as required. And various options for that. FTP uploading, which is a nice feature. Um, not some I've used myself, but it, is, it can be handy certainly. Um, so if you get alarm events, you can upload it to a server. So even if the camera or DVR or NVR gets discovered and destroyed, the footage is still saved. Um, user setting, network security, HTTPS, so yeah, well, I'm not using any of that. And all these other options here. IP address filtering, so if you're only going to um, administer the software, well, the, if you're only going to be using admin login from a certain IP address, you can limit it to that IP address um, so other people can't access it. Um, and turn it into it as well, apparently. Hide window info, okay. Watermarking. So if you want to put those watermark over the images. Time, I always cover this anyway, the time server stuff. Server info, so this is a TMS thing, but I've got need to look into that. And maintenance safe and upgrade firmware. Do a manual restart and stuff on. Um, and you can save the settings and import them again if you need to. And diagnostic info, so it's pretty comprehensive. It's it does a large amount of stuff. Um, so you got uh, playback view here, so you can go back and view history of events and, and dates. Um, as you would expect, so you can view it from off the SD card. Uh, what's this doing? Don't know. If any photos are stored? I guess it will list off. Put a list of photos down here, and I see there's all the setup I was in there just now. So, um, live viewing, so audio and microphone inputs, playback screen. Obviously, I don't have the bug in, so uh, what's this one? Does it have any tips? And, uh, snapshot, yep. Start video recording, start two way audio, and have a digital zoom, and full screen. So Okay, so that's the same for the uh, screens. So I have to say this is a pretty comprehensive camera. It does a lot of stuff. Um, and the interface looks really nicely designed as well. I'm actually quite impressed by this camera. It looks like a really good quality one. Um, of course, you haven't seen the images from it yet. But um, so far, it's looking very promising as to be a good camera. Right, I think I shall stop this bit of video here. Right, so I've uh, boots up the... PC laptop here and um, I've got the camera hooked up to it just plug straight in Ethernet cable nothing else um, and this is obviously live view right so I've already logged into the unit and I've just started poking around it a little bit trying to figure out um, what's what and where it is so this view here is from the camera which is lying on the bench um, just here and obviously just pointing up to my test bench here um, you know, over here somewhere, it's a bit sideways actually. I'll spin around a bit. Um, so it seems to work okay. It's, it's th so it's got three streams: it's got the mainstream, substream here, which is slightly different resolution, and there's a third stream here, which is the lowest resolution, um, which is what you'd expect. Um, you can go into the settings. And as I showed you on the Mac, um, it's all very similar. So we go to image settings, for example, this is what you probably want to see. So you've got these adjustments in here. I've had a little play around with these, just a little one, just um, trying to get an idea for it. Um, so if I do manual exposure and 
figure out how to use this custom here we go custom so that is the compensation adjustment which is changing that level there um, so obviously you need to adjust this for the situation if it's outside you might actually need to turn it down a bit um, but I think I'll just leave it on automatic it's just adjust itself that way um, and also you've got the other general adjustments here uh, which you're going to change to wherever you want um, more reduction levels and stuff like that um, brightness and when you make the adjustment change you can see it does a save to the camera then it updates so it's obviously all done in terms of the camera as you'd expect um, obviously this is using Internet Explorer um, I already have ActiveX installed in this machine from doing other tests so um, that wasn't I didn't actually have to install anything in this case um, so it just worked which is nice and easy um, so what else do you want to see you want to see um, video options so these will be set to different qualities I've increased this quality right up I was just playing around with it um, let me drop it down a bit. I may also make it variable bitrate and increase this to 8.1k um, just to try and help that slightly. I don't think I need three streams, but I'm not quite sure what I need of it yet. So, um, yeah, I, I might uh, really look at that. And there's a D1 substream there and a SIF substream, so yeah, I mean, I, that's all going to put loading on the network, but I don't actually know what I need yet. Um, so I'll tweak these as time goes by. Um, if I change this to 4 megapixel, you get this message here come up says changing the snapshot mode will restore the default encoding settings and can cause the device to restart for some models. So not expect it to restart. So well, yeah, it's it's just I was just having a look. So it doesn't really matter too much. Um, snapshot mode. So that's when it takes that snapshot occasionally, which I haven't played with. I don't want to look for. Um, on screen display stuff that's right so um, so over here is now showing the areas you can change where they are um, you might even better drag it can you yeah, you can you can drag them the way you want them so that's um, pretty good so that is yeah that's a date and time on this there so you can add, add, add options I'm not quite sure what they are. So look, we've got so date and time, people counting, don't displays any people, that's kind of cool. Um, date and time independently, scrolling on the display, picture overlay, network pool, which is interesting. But uh, okay, so that's all that does there. So we'll take that back up here, like that out of the way. Um, I'll bring it down slightly. Things do tend to go off screen sometimes. Again, it's saved every time we make a change, so that's quite nice. Um, privacy mask. So let's, let's add a mask and let's figure out how to do it. There you go. It's privacy mask. Easy as that. So you just drag it to, the, to what you want and it blocks that out. Um, yeah, so it does as it should. That's all fine. Um, smart settings and advanced settings. I did kind of look at this before, didn't I? Um, is there anything in here I can show you? Um, cross line thing, yes, right. So you can set a area of where it is sensitive to movement and things like that for the various alarm options. So you know if you wanted to set um, a detection rule. I'm not quite sure what these are yet. So if something goes past there, it will trigger, kind of thing. So yeah. All right. So so I got interrupted there for a second. So um, so as you can see, I mean, it seems to work absolutely fine the way you expect it to on Internet Explorer. So what I might try next is Chrome to see how Chrome handles it, if at all. So it mentions here about the plugin. But it probably doesn't matter. We'll see if Chrome will work. Plug it 
plugin not supported. So um, Chrome may or may not require further configuration. Um, personally, I don't like Chrome. I yeah, I, I, I hate Internet Explorer. I dislike Chrome. I prefer Firefox, but I don't really like any PC browsers to be honest. Um, Firefox to me is still one of the better ones, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know, people will disagree, but I find Chrome is too controlling. It just tries to do too much for you, as rather just let it just work. And I found issues with Chrome hasn't been quite standards compliant, so I don't trust it at all. But uh, anyway, so that's that. So the um, it works on a PC. Um, so next thing I'll do, which I won't be out of time to do today, I'm just going to have to wait a couple of days, but um, I'll be doing a uh, the next part on setting up the NVR with the uh, with the camera and um, going from there. So let's go back up again. So yeah, we'll go back to the NVR and uh, set it up on that and it sh see how that goes. I mean, no idea. I've got to set up a screen obviously for that and connect the NVR up and the networking and things like that. So I haven't actually installed the NVR in my network yet because um, at the time I had one camera. Now I've been given a second one here. Um, then I can do a bit more. Um, so it's you know, I'll be installing that once I get enough bits of gear to actually make it worth to do worthwhile to actually install the whole thing, and then I'll be able to plug things in and test it a little bit more easily. But uh, for the meantime, I've had to sort of bodge things together as I'm, as I'm doing testing. So um, yeah, it takes a bit of effort to put it all back together, but that's all right. Um, but yeah, this camera seems to work exactly the way you would expect it to at the moment. I mean. Um, I've got the outcome I expected on the Mac, I've got the outcome I expected on the PC. Um, so the quality of the unit seems really good. Um, yeah, but obviously this is really close and it's you know a really steep angle. I mean this this bit of gear here, this distance there, that's only about a foot. Um, I believe this has got a 2.8 millimeter lens on it, so it's quite a wide angle. So um, I can see to what here, about there, over to halfway across my shelf there. So yeah, it's quite a wide angle there. That's probably close to 90 degree angle. Um, so yeah, it can certainly see quite well. I'll spin it around a bit more like this. There we go. So there's my whole bench. Alright, so yeah. Not bad at all. But anyway, so the next part you'll see will be me setting up the NVR and trying it on that, but um, unfortunately I've run out of time today. Right, so this is the... Uh video from that camera. Now I've got it set up. Um, my, I'm only currently just running this as a temporary setup on my desk here. I've got a thing stuck out the window and uh, you can see how, the, how sharp this is and the quality of this is actually very very good. Um, I had to reconfigure some of the network settings on the camera itself for the NVR would recognize it. Uh, if I go to channel settings. So these are the settings I've currently got, which is uh, 1.13 is the main login one, port 80, mainstream substream. Right? The camera does actually have three streams, so it's not actually looking at all three, it's only using two of them, but um, I just obviously need to tweak that to optimize the network usage and things like that. Um, and obviously put the default admin and default password in, I haven't changed anything there yet. Um, it's using Onvif. Um, Protocol and I actually did a search over here and I found it just here. So I did a search and transferred it over. Um, well, I actually transferred it on channel two. There's I got it on channel five here, but that's all right. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it works okay. Um, I just changed the uh, network addresses so it fell within um, the configuration I had on the NVR, which is um, with a point one. Uh, subnet and a different subnet mask. I bought a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0 so I could find each other and communicate. Once I did that, then I could connect to the the camera showed up doing a search and I could just put it on in. And um, yeah, as you can see from this picture, it's extremely good quality. Um, there's a bit of blurriness over here, but it's probably just me. But I've left probably left a fingerprint on the glass or something like that. Um, but within the, this field of vision from here to here, it's perfect um, and luckily it's got a 2.5 millimeter lens on it so it's very wide angle as you can see and that's covering quite a large section of the pathway compared to um, footage I did previously of different cameras um, and I'm doing other trials on some other cameras I've got for review from um, Banggood 
So um, they only had a, a much narrower field of view, probably about that far. Probably, probably about much covered that much. So it's coming a lot more on this one. But this blueness here is interesting. It's probably just a fingerprint on the on the glass or something like that. Um, or maybe I've touched the lens when I had the thing apart as possible to, you know. But um, I doubt that's really an issue there. Looks like dirt somewhere. Um, but yeah, it all looks nice. Um, it was fairly easy to set up. I didn't really have to do much. It just works. So um, that's a very good camera. I recommend highly. Um, go and follow those links down below and uh, and go uh, and check out this camera. I mean, this isn't even the highest resolution setting. It can go higher. <laughs> so I'm not using the highest setting. Um, this is 2560 by something I've forgotten what it is now. Um, instead of the 4 megapixel, which is the maximum it can do. So, uh, and 25 frames rate, so you can see it's all moving around quite nicely and whatever. So, uh, yeah. I don't think there's any other settings I can do on a camera from here. This is all MVR type stuff, really. Um, I don't believe it's got any PTZ controls. I don't think so. Don't know. Um, I don't believe there's any controls there. I thought I'd have a look just in case. Nothing there. Nah. So there's no PTZ controls on it, um, but that's fine. I wasn't expecting it to be. But I'm actually very impressed with the quality of the camera. It's it looks really nice. Um, I would say, screwing this blue in this here, which I think I can explain. Um, it it's. Um, it's probably the best looking camera I've got, I have to say. Um, but that's what you get for IP cameras, you know, you get this high resolution and higher detail. So that's that's brilliant. I mean, if someone was, if this is a sort of, you know, inappropriate spot, we could get people's faces, you could easily identify people really easily with really good detail. It's um, a very good camera. So, um, yeah, I highly recommend it. The other thing I should probably point out here is that. I haven't changed any of the settings on, on the MVR for this camera. So look at the image settings, they're all at default zero values. So the actual output from the camera isn't tweaked at all. That's exactly as it is. Um, so you could probably maybe could argue the saturation is a bit strong because um, the green is a bit strong there. Um, but if I look at the window, give me a second. It is about right. That is quite a strong green on that plant. So it may be slightly saturated, um, but not much. It's not exaggerated much at all, really. So um, I think it's it's actually fairly accurate. Um, yeah, so don't forget to go and check out the links below. Um, and uh, if you purchase it through the Amazon links, I think I'll actually get um, an affiliate thing there as well. I've, I've hooked up a thing there. I haven't used it yet. Um, I've just set up an affiliate account with Amazon. So. Not only will you help me to get more items to review um, by helping promote it, I may actually get an um, extra commission there from Amazon as well for promoting sales through their site. Um, so it helps me a bit as well. It doesn't cost you anymore. Um, so definitely go and check out the links below. And um, thank you very much for supplying the camera, if I can remember what the company is called. This card gone. These people. Um, Omni CCTV, right? Omni CCTV, and this is from Unitech. Um, so yeah, definitely, you know, go check it out. I mean, I'm very happy with this camera. I mean, it's brilliant. I really like it. Um, and I'm actually, I'd actually say um, some narrower field of view ones, like um, probably a, a six mil lens, um, would be really good for me too. Um, a six mil will certainly suit some situation I've got where I've got like driveways or I want to get a good view down a driveway, that kind of thing. This is brilliant for this kind of situation on a pathway or in a hallway, that kind of thing. Um, but actually like a six mil lens version of the same kind of camera or something similar, um, an IP camera which will uh, give me a longer distance one. Um, that'd be quite nice to have too at one point. But uh, anyway, maybe one day I'll get one I'll do a review on one. We'll see how we go. So don't forget, check the links out. Um, check out the seller. Um, and 
give us a thumbs up and subscribe and that sort of stuff definitely give us a thumbs up um, that sort of stuff does help the channel out and um, if you like reviews you know or if you've got any comments to add please note it down below in the comments um, I'll, I'll welcome more feedback good and bad or should I say um, positive and constructive <laughs> Uh, constructive feedback is always nice to have too so uh, yeah certainly get in touch and give us your feedback, feelings as well on what you see but uh, I, I I'm very pleased with this camera this is great um, and it'll be certainly be used by me once I get my um, MVR IP camera system set up um, to replace my existing analog system that'd be great so okay thanks a lot catch you later give a thumbs up and remember to subscribe if you're not already. Did you know?